you know, it's kind of crazy that I'm saying this, but this wallpaper, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> when we moved into this house, this wallpaper, oh, it was in our entire bedroom and it needed to come down. And this is the last remaining place. I'm Serena Pia from Thrift Diving. And today we're gonna actually walk through how do you remove wallpaper? But this process is more than just removing the wallpaper because I guarantee when you remove wallpaper, you will have some brown paper bag areas of where the paper was pulled off of your drywall. How do you repair that before you prime and paint? So we're gonna do that in this video. I'm gonna show you how to remove this, how to fix the walls, how to paint it, and it's gonna look fantastic. And um, yeah, bye-bye wallpaper. You were good in 73, but not in 2019. <laughs> So this is what my closet looked like before I started this project. You see that we just had things jam packed in here. I don't think we were really utilizing this space as best as we could. And we really just kind of took over whatever the previous people had in there nine years ago. Well, this time it was time to remove this wallpaper, get rid of all this junky stuff and actually have a closet system. So that's what I'm gonna be building, which you'll see in part two. But part one, this is the removal of the wallpaper. Ooh, the wallpaper's coming down tomorrow. Look at this, I have a lot of folded clothes up here. Oh, where am I gonna put all this stuff? My goodness. That was a challenging part, finding a place to shove all of our clothes. And so thankfully we had some open closets and we got rid of everything. And it's also stacked up in our bedroom. But with a blank slate, it was time for me to start removing the shelving. Now I've done other shelving in the house and that's something I knew I wanted to do, new shelves. So that was what was in my mind when I first began this, that I would just remove these old, I think it's like contact paper on just sort of like an MDF board. And I really wanted something a little bit more upscale. And so I've done this with a lot of the closets. If you look down below, you'll find some links of other closets that I've done. And it's really easy to do your own closets with pine and just staining it and doing a really nice top coat. Well, I decided after going through this entire project so far, and you'll see at the end, I changed my mind about removing some of these wall supports here, but I decided that I'm going to rebuild the entire closet. It's not a huge space. I would say it's probably seven by five. So it's probably about maybe just under 40 square feet. So it's really not a huge space. But the first thing I needed to do is just get everything out of there before I could start removing the wallpaper. So you're gonna need a wallpaper steamer when you do this project. And this is the exact one that I've used for all the wallpaper in my house. It's worked really, really well. And I will have a materials list link down below. So make sure that you click on that so you can see the entire list of what you need. Now, a couple of safety things. This is very hot. So make sure when you are removing the wallpaper, your hands are not in the way. They're not near where the steam is. You're not actually touching that plastic piece because it's very hot. The steam will also collect on the wall and create hot water. So make sure that you're watching your hands whenever you're peeling the wallpaper and the water, the steam is up high. Just be careful that it's not burning you. That has happened to me a couple of times. Now, you also wanna make sure that you're not damaging your floor because of all the water coming out you know it's collecting it's steam steam turns into water right so you want to make sure that you've got a towel on the floor by the baseboards all right so now let's move on to how you actually remove this wallpaper so now we're ready to start removing this wallpaper and i am purposely not going to speed up this part of the video because i want you to see how long it really takes to remove wallpaper if it's sped up, you're not gonna get an idea of how long I'm really leaving this on here. So we're gonna do this in real time, guys. Sorry, it might be a little boring, but there's some people who might really appreciate this. So you'll see that I'm leaving this steamer on here for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, in terms of where I'm starting, it's best to start at a seam. You see there's a seam in the wallpaper here. That will actually give you a good starting point. Now, if you wanna start at the ceiling, you can. If you wanna start at the base of the floor near the baseboards, that's fine. Start anywhere you want to but just make sure you start at a seam because it's just a little easier to get started. Now you'll notice that I'm pulling this wallpaper off as it's loosened up, but I've got the steamer underneath. So as it's working underneath, I'm then able to pull the wallpaper from the wall. Now the thing is you wanna make sure you're not going too fast because let me show you what happens when you go too fast. So look closely, you're gonna see a couple things. Number one, you'll see a brown paper bag area. Don't freak out, you're not gonna totally ruin your house. But you'll also see that there is some paper left on the wall that came off of the wallpaper. 
So this happened because there was not enough steam that was applied to the wall. You just went a little too fast there, Serena. And this is kind of normal, like all the wallpaper that I've removed in the house, you will get wallpaper that pulls off the drywall and you will get some paper left on the wall. So I will show you how to correct for that. Don't worry, it is normal. Sometimes we go a little faster because we just wanna get this stuff off. Now, another thing you'll notice is that the wallpaper will start to bubble. It'll start to pull away from the wall and that's what you want. That means the glue is coming off. Now, when I pulled back here, I saw that there was a brown paper bag area. That told me that there was still some spots that was not completely ready to separate. So after leaving it on there for a few more seconds, then it was time to pull it off. And the thing is, is that you won't completely prevent paper bag areas. There will be some, I can guarantee it. But again, I will show you how to fix those and you won't even notice them. But as I'm pulling away, I realize it's not gonna be easy to get that off. And so I just kind of rip it off with my hands, knowing that I'll be able to come back later and fix it. So we can speed this up a little bit. Couple of things I wanna point out. Notice my towel is already wet, so make sure you have a lot of dry towels. You'll also see me removing the air vent here on the bottom left-hand corner. You wanna get that wallpaper underneath. And wallpaper removal, it's really messy. You're gonna have a lot of pieces of wallpaper, so make sure that you've got some trash bags nearby so you can keep taking the stuff out as it comes off the wall. So once you've removed the wallpaper, the next step is that you actually have to remove the glue from the wall. That's right, you've got to apply steam to the wall again just to loosen up all the gunk that was holding the wallpaper to the wall. And it's not pretty. Now generally you can remove all the wallpaper before you do this step. I actually was working in sections and I just preferred doing it that way, but you can do it the other way as well. This is what it's gonna look like. It is gunk, it is glue, thick glue. And you need to have a box or something that you can scrape that stuff off into the box so that you can continue scraping it off the wall. Now, the next thing, once you've scraped all the glue, then you'll wanna take some simple green and just scrub the wall down with a fresh bucket of water. Now, I'm just doing this part for demonstration, but I also, again, worked in sections, and then once I was done that, then I continued working along this wall. And here's an example of what happens when you become really impatient and you start peeling things off the wall and it's not ready to be peeled off. You will start getting a ton of brown paper bag areas like I did. But this could also be that you need to put more water in your steamer because what happens is as it starts to run out of water, there's less steam coming out, of course. And so if you start noticing the wallpaper is not coming off very easily, you might need to refill the tank. Okay, so it is day two and a half of this closet makeover, and we have removed wallpaper, we have let the walls thoroughly dry, we have removed all the glue, and now they're actually feeling smooth. They're rough, but they feel smooth, right? We can't feel any of the glue. And now we are ready to sand. Now we could use a drywall sander, which is just basically a handheld thing going back and forth, but I really like using an orbital sander. It does create a lot of dust, so you wanna make sure you have a dust mask but it's gonna help smooth out all these brown patches and any place that feels rough on the wall, we want those spots nice and smooth because then we're gonna come back and we're gonna skim coat. I'll tell you what that is in just a moment, but I'm ready to go. Make sure you have your eye protection and you definitely wanna have a mask. We do not wanna be breathing this stuff in. So let's get started with sanding these walls. Let's take a look at this paper bag area and have a listen. That crunchy sound, that's the sound that you want to hear. That means your wall is dry, and so you should definitely wait 24 hours until your wall feels crunchy before you move on to this step. Now, we are using 220 grit, very fine sandpaper, and you'll wanna do that over your entire wall, but you'll see that crispiness there, right there where that wallpaper had pulled off the drywall, it's gonna start falling off, it'll be crumbly. And that's what you want. It's going to smooth everything nice and smooth. <laughs> And you'll see that I'm running my hand over the wall while I'm using this. That's checking the wall to see if there's any crunchiness, any hard, rough spots. Because if you have that, it will show in your painting that you do later. So that's why we're gonna make sure everything is smooth. You'll notice I've got a piece of wallpaper that's still there. And the reason why is because when I first started this project, I thought that I would leave the shelving supports in place and I would just be replacing the shelving. Well, later I actually decided to remove all of the supports. And so by doing that, 
there was actually one piece of wall support that still had wallpaper underneath of it. For the most part, there was not wallpaper under these sections, which was good. Now, sometimes it was hard to get this off, and so I just had to use a circular saw to kind of break it up a little bit just so that I could pull off sections because I didn't want to damage the wall. I didn't want to have to do any like major drywall repair. So by cutting little sections, I could just easily break it off and, you know, be able to remove it without damaging the wall. And here's a little safety tip. If you're removing any trim that has nails or screws, remove the screws or take something like a hammer or even a pry bar and just make sure those nails are not sticking up. So now that the walls are dry, they are smooth, the next thing is making sure that they are clean. Now I didn't show myself wiping the walls with a sponge, but you definitely wanna sponge them down, run your hand over, there should not be any dust at all on those walls. Because the next thing we're ready for is skim coating. Now we're gonna be using something called joint compound and we're gonna be using a taping knife, about an eight inch taping knife. And this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna open up the bucket, Mix it around, this is pre-mixed, so we don't have to add water or do anything like that, it's ready to go. And we're gonna put some in a mud pan. This is typically what's used for drywalling. And then we're gonna skim coat. So here's the important thing about skim coating. You are basically smoothing this joint compound over the wall and filling all of these little valleys, all of these little paper bag areas that are just a probably a 1 32nd of thickness. We're gonna cover that and make sure that we go over it nice and smooth. Now, you'll notice here I'm going over it several times. You'll see the little line there. Sometimes you'll get little pieces of paper or maybe dried pieces of joint compound that leave those little pieces in there. And just make sure you take those out because you want your wall to be nice and smooth. And you're just gonna keep going over the entire wall. All the places where there are any dips, valleys, crevices, fill those babies in. You know, I think I forgot how much I hated wallpaper until I started doing this closet makeover, but it's coming together. Trust me, it looks horrible, but after it dries, we're gonna let it dry for about an hour. We're gonna come back with actually maybe some spots. Some spots need more than an hour. We're gonna come back with some fine sandpaper. We're gonna smooth this out, and then we're gonna do a coat of primer and then a coat of paint. So it's coming along, we're getting there. And while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna go make some apple pie for the kids. Who doesn't love homemade apple pie? And I make a good one. It's probably about the only thing that I can bake. <laughs> and that is the truth because I am not a good cook and I definitely don't bake very well. <laughs> okay, so moving on, I've got a drywall sander in my hand and I've got some very fine sandpaper on it. I'm going over it very lightly and I just want to make sure that everything is smooth, nice and smooth as I like it. I do wanna point out when you are doing this, please make sure you are wearing a mask. I just decided to get a little silly just to kind of show you how thick this stuff really is. If it's possible, close the door to the room that you're working in, open the window because this stuff is thick. You don't wanna breathe this in. So once you've made sure the walls are clean, it is time for the primer. Now you're probably wondering if you're using a regular paint that has primer in it, do you still have to prime? In this case, yes, because joint compound is very drying. It will suck up your paint and it will leave dark spots all over your wall. So don't skip this step. Definitely do two coats of primer and it should look really good. Now let's talk about the paint. Oh, I let my son pick out the paint color and while I like the color, it's just not the color for me. It's definitely not the color for this closet, but I just decided, you know what? He picked the paint. We were short on time. I said, here, just pick whatever color. And he picked this. And while I like the color, it's not the color for me because I like things more girly, pink, purples, turquoise, and this is just a little too masculine. But, you know, he picked it out. I figured I'd go ahead and continue and just went ahead and finished painting it. And this is around the time we were leaving for Brazil. So I needed to get this done like right before we left. And that's why I just chose whatever color. But this is where you come in, dear viewer, because I'm gonna ask you, what color do you think I should paint this closet? I want you to tell me your favorite paint color, the color that just makes you so excited, you get happy when you look at it. And keep in mind that I do like fluffy girly colors. <laughs> you can leave your comment down below with the name of the paint. I will look it up, I will research, and maybe your color will be chosen for this closet. So let's take another look again at what it looked like before and what it looks like now. You can see that I do need your help, but I am so excited to get started in 
building this closet. And I'm gonna just show you real quick some things that I sketched out. The back wall, I'd love to put lots of cubbies. Remember, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing a podcast soon and I need a place to record. So that's where my desk will be. The clothes will be to the right with lots of cubbies and maybe a place for dresses. And then over to the other side next to the window, more cubbies, hopefully find a place to store that bulky luggage. Gosh, what a pain in the butt. All right, so leave your comment down below. Let me know what you think about this tutorial. Was it a good tutorial? Was it helpful for you to remove wallpaper? If you have ugly wallpaper in your home, this tutorial hopefully will help you. All right, I will see you next video and hopefully I'll be getting to this closet build real soon. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next video. So I have two main thoughts. <laughs> Number one, where in the heck do I put all of this stuff? And number two, actually three thoughts. Number two, uh, I don't get to wear some of this stuff anymore because I don't work outside of the home, so I never get to dress up and look good. And number three, look at this cool dress that I made. I actually made this dress. The thing is, is I've gained too much weight. I don't fit it anymore. This is what bloggers do when they're supposed to be working. They record themselves singing. No one, no one, no one can get in the way of what I'm feeling. That it will only get better. <laughs> yep, stick to your day job, Serena. Stick to your day job. I'll see you next video.